welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions and i am currently on the balcony which is why i am not being that loud apologies for the noise but i have just a little bit of light left <laughs> because it's like the longest days of summer now i can really milk it when it's not hot but i can still be outside let's <laughs> continue on with attack on titan i need to finish it before i go down for the seaside or for holiday so volume nine let's go hopefully i'll rant less this time because no regrets absolutely took up like half the video yeah let's we're starting season two now and again just like last vlog full spoilers and i will comment anything that i notice is different from the show moved to the room because it became dark way too quickly but anywho done with volume nine nothing really different from the anime here apart from the thing that like when they or when uh, or when i mean uh, aaron and <laughs> levi and hanji and all the others when they get to like the place where levi and the monk pastor i why am i this tired are separating it's like ordered a little bit differently like later we get a flashback to what levi told them before they left it's just cut a bit differently, but essentially it's everything's the same. But I love the little detail when I'm not sure if it's worded exactly like this in the anime, but when Levi like comes up to Mikas and he's like, You have to take care of Aaron now. Don't do mistakes like that again. Be careful and use all the skills in your arsenal. And she's like, Yes, sir, I will. I don't know. I just love their little interactions. I don't think that's different from the anime that still exists, but how he warns her is everything to me and it just makes me so much angrier to know that we never got the acro talk yeah. they barely acknowledged it even before he knew that he was an ackerman i hate this <laughs> went to get volume 10 and there's a reason why everyone found season two the most boring and that's because the events are kind of slow like i didn't find it boring at all like the whole mission with Utgard castle seemed a bit long but like the whole betrayal bit and when they go after Reina and Bertolt and the whole last fight, how could you have found that boring? Like half the season is not really boring, more slow. But the second half is just bitching. And considering that this is manga, this is the last volume where every, anything is like even a little bit boring. So let's just quickly move through it until we get to <laughs> season three, which is the box sets again. But that's by far my favorite bit of the story so I'm gonna try and dial down talking on this section anywho I finished finished volume 10 there's nothing different <laughs> nothing different from the anime but this might I mean I love love season three but this might be my favorite moment of all time because how casually they handle it I, the first time I didn't even hear what Rida was saying. I didn't register it until they transformed, actually. But I find it so hilarious. Hilarious. I was just so... Anyway, anyway, Aaron, um, I'm the armored, he's the colossal, and we destroyed uh, half of humanity like a couple of years ago. You might have heard of our work. <laughs> that just freaking makes me laugh. But... This is probably my favorite part in the show because the soundtrack for this scene, immaculate. And I always get chills because I prefer the dub, as Eddie said. I always get chills when Bryce does the thing, damn you, you traitors, because you can feel the raw emotion in the voice. I'm always going to get chills on that scene. But, and yeah, and I love the parallel how Mika says finally like Levi she reacts and she doesn't hesitate but Rhyna has <laughs> plot armor of the century if he wasn't Isama's favorite I think he would have died like six times in this series story <laughs> we are done with volume 11 <laughs> I had to actually look at it but I'm just feeling a little bit iffy right now but this was great this is now such a good chunk because 
I've said this before and I'll say it again. Some people don't like Aaron for their own reasons, but a lot of people don't like Aaron because he's so angry all the time and so some would say whiny, although I would really take offense to that, but <laughs> as a fellow Aries, I adore him and I literally relate to him so much. <laughs> he's literally like when you're done talking, I'm going to kill you in the most painful way possible. He is angry all the time. He just wants to jump at it. Like, if you're a fire sign, then definitely, he's definitely a mood, especially if you're an Aries. I'm actually shocked by how calm Jean is, but I, I am Aaron and I love Aaron so much. <laughs> like, my anger issues are Aaron. Although my personality is more Levi, but yeah, I love Aaron so much and that is exactly how I would react. Exactly how I would react. And now that we're done with this, it's time for the last fight, which I absolutely freaking hate. Because in the last fight, the creepy ass titan is back and poor Hannes <laughs> has to suffer, but yeah. I hate rereading this because it makes me want to rewatch the show. It's now been a full two months without me watching the show, and it feels like too much to me, but I've already watched it more than once. So let's move on to volume 12, and then we finally get to season three. I'm so excited. It's so weird to put into perspective how little time it actually passes. Like, this is volume tw 11, I'm going to volume 12. I've already almost finished two see equivalents to two seasons of the show. And it's been like, what, a month and a half? Not even two months? It's even weirder in season three because you realize that uh, this is just the only thing that I will ever say on that topic because I hate it so much. But the fact that Levi was apparently so hurt that when Erwin brought out the MPs, the garrison, and all of the scouts that he could to go rescue Aaron because that was literally the most important thing that they had to do to not lose Aaron. He pulled out all the stops but left Levi with his injured foot, leg, whatever, to guard Pastor Nick. Even though with his injured foot, Levi had rescued Aaron, rode a horse back, is walking, has been walking since then. I think even an injured Levi could be useful. That's been bothering me for so long. And even an injured Levi would be more useful than half the people. And then, because it wasn't convenient for him to have Levi injured anymore, in at the beginning of season three or in volume 13, Levi is immediately fine. He is assigned squad maybe several days past, and now Levi is fine doing the most complex fight scenes in a city that anyone has ever done and we don't ever mention his injury again. So yeah, that's just something that I'm bitter about. He keeps, that's the story, like story device where you have someone who's too strong and having them would actually solve the problem immediately. So you give them a bogus injury that's only a problem until you don't even need it anymore for it. <laughs> when you don't need it to be a problem anymore, that's when it's not a problem anymore. That's definitely not how injuries work. But yeah, anyway, that's my two cents on that. In the words of the great Mikasa Ackerman herself, in case anyone ever asks me why I am a Jaegerist, <clears throat> there are only so many lives I can value, and I decided who those people were six years ago. So you shouldn't try to ask for my pity, because right now I don't have time to spare or room in my heart. That is exactly, she voiced it, worded it perfectly. I just, I would fling those words at anyone who ever tried to explain it to me. But you're not supposed to pick sides. The Marleyans had it tough too. I mean, they sent their own, they sent kids who were 12 year olds to kill other people. Do you not hear the problem with that? Sure, Rhina and Berthold were, were victims, <laughs> but you don't see them changing after several years. They spent three years with 
people they were supposed to kill and they still slaughtered them, didn't show them any mercy because they're Marlians first. And <laughs> sure, they have regret. I respect that, but I still want them to die. And the fact that they didn't, the fact that Rhina somehow made it, like if he wasn't Isayama's favorite, that man would not make it, like no way. So yes, in the eternal question of versus versus, Aaron and the Agrists all the way, literally all the way. And nothing that you say could really change my mind. Literally nothing. Mikasa said it perfectly. From the beginning, we were giving people, we given people to care about, and then later, we were told that maybe those who wanted them dead could also be right. I don't have room to care anymore, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Stomp on them. Stomp on all of them. I, I'm sorry. There's no more room for sympathy <laughs> in my heart. So I have no idea why, but apparently the most emotional moments, some of them at least, are in season two. Because I'm just reading it and I'm getting physical pain from reading it because the bit when the <laughs> when the creepy titan kills Hannes and Eren just literally co collapses to the floor and just laughs as he cries. That's also how I would probably react, by the way. Eren always makes fun of him for laughing instead of crying, but that's just, you can't help it. And he's just like, you're still useless and so weak. You can't save everyone. Mom, I'm still just a boy that needs help and is too weak. I don't know why that breaks me apart literally every time. It breaks me literally every time. And I want to cry when I hear it. And when I see it. So when he finally uses the power to channel it. And he throws it at... I forgot what the fuck her name is anyway. Creature's ex-wife. I get such chills. I don't know why the two moments that I described at the beginning of this vlog and now, they might be my favorites. Like, I'm probably going to have more favorites now that I'm going to go into season three. But these two literally always give me chills. Literally always. Just seeing him so weak like that and then finally get some power back. I hope none of y'all are just sitting here and trying to justify the fact that the warriors lived. And Aaron had to die. But the moment when he tells Mikasa, I mean, it's for me, I prefer it in the dub because Bryce's voice acting is everything to me. But when he, like, with a little, still a bit of a cry voice, weepy voice, he just says, like, I'll, I'll always be there to wrap your scarf. Like, I, I was just reading it out again and again forever. And the fact that they didn't get the happiness that they deserve. This just makes me angry because I am trying to do my best to ignore the ending. I'm doing my best, I swear, but. God. <laughs> God damn it. Now that we are done with volume 12. I'm gonna go and get the first box set and we can get season 3 started. I am so excited. So freaking excited because that's my favorite chunk of the story. You don't even understand. Maybe because Wit peaked in all of animation in season 3. But A, I'm finally getting Levi back. B, I'm getting Kenny and the Ackerman history, which yes, 10 out of 10. And see, we're getting the best fights ever. The only problem is that, for example, I'm not sure it's going to be that epic in the manga. I love this part in the anime because there's a lot of action, a lot of good action. But considering that isn't really that prominent in physical form, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this chunk of the story. But I know for a fact that there's a lot of stuff that they didn't put in the show in this, this part. So... I'm not sure how much more I'm going to read today because, like, there is such a thing as too much. But let's go get the box set and crack it open because I am so looking forward to it. We can finally leave Levi's injury behind because it was so bad that it healed in under a week. <laughs> anyway, there's just one funny thing that has to be acknowledged. And that's that as soon as he started using Levi again, he also made him purposefully hotter because look at this. Like, there's no way he would make him this attractive in this stance with this outfit. <laughs> like, all of this was intentional. So the fact that Wit 
made him so ungodly beautiful in season three. It's frankly a little bit <laughs> too much for me. Every time I start season three and he shows up, I'm like, it physically pains me to look at you <laughs> because no one should look that way. So now that we're finally in season three, let's finally establish Levi's squad because I said this to my friend where, when we were watching the show together because I am trying to initiate her into it <laughs> but everything gets better when the scouts are prominent like the story was a little boring until the scouts came in then it was mostly about the warriors boring 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 but then once they're part of Levi's squad they all become instantly more interesting <laughs> i am not even kidding like all of the characters are instantly more interesting when they're in Levi's squad and they're just doing actual scout fighting things i can't even explain it i'm not just saying that as someone who is a levi worshiper i am saying that as someone who objectively the first time i didn't sing for levi everything just got so much more interesting when they joined his squad and started hanging out with hanji and like the scouts i just love the scout veterans more than anything and when they're absent i feel that i feel like the thing that gets cut from the anime the most is the little interactions between levi's squad because I think the whole conversation where Jean is hyping up Aaron, not maybe not whole of it, I don't remember now. I am due for a rewatch. But he's hyping him up and they're talking and he's like, Thank you, Jean, that is exactly what I needed and they they have such a cute conversation and banter when Connie joins in and This chapter is called Squad Levi. So here they're gonna become Levi Squad. They become instantly better. Like, their dynamics, their relationships. Yes. <laughs> like, they are everything to me. I love the veterans more, but the kids, when they're all together. Why are they cutting out all the banter? Like, just little lines, even between the veterans. It's like, after the, the hell are you smiling about, it's like, you're gonna make me sick. Which, frankly, a mood. I've been told that since I was a child. Is that the real reason you're in the survey corps? Ease off, Levi. My arm was eaten. I'm physically and emotionally exhausted. Don't you have some pity for me? You are pitiful. <laughs> like, just little stuff like that. I mean, I remember reading that online, but just little stuff like that. I understand they can't animate everything. I understand, but they did such a good job with season three. There's also a line that I'm very heartbroken that was cut out. You'll, I'll get to it later. But why cut the banker? why cut the banter that's the best part i understand you want to focus more on the action because banter is what's what reading is for and action is what watching is for but i needed this interaction <laughs> frankly i'm insulted that you cut out any words that matthew mercer had to say because that's a crime against humanity but this context too like you want to tell me that we didn't need context of how they became levi's squad i would have killed to know that in the show literally killed it's like your arm was eaten and you're physically and emotionally exhausted i felt bad for you so i went ahead and made some decisions that includes new members of my squad what Aaron needs is to be pushed into total desperation in the show i was literally like I remember seeing a tiktok like oh my god who thrust the kids into levi's hands it was probably erwin he hated that comment levi did that himself Levi literally did that himself. <laughs> he was like, you were very hurt, so I felt bad for you. I made some decisions on my own, which we know he hates doing. He hates taking responsibility for other people and things. Mood. But how he's literally like, yeah, I made the decision. They're part of my squad. Now we need to push him into desperation so he can do what he needs to do. He took them on voluntarily. And I remember, I vividly remember just seeing someone talk about him. He probably hated that when everyone told him he has to take care of kids. Levi did it himself. Levi did it himself. Why was this entire scene trimmed? This isn't even season three yet. This is all the ending of season two. But yes, I am thriving. This is something that I just have to talk about. I already said that Sean and Aaron's, or John and Aaron's relationship is probably really up there for me. 
because they shouldn't really get along but i love their dynamic they just insult the crap out of each other but they actually kind of really respect each other and bring each other up but when he's literally like did you just wipe, wipe your feet and all the dust before you came in here and he's like what no we were carrying all this stuff do you think that will fly with captain levi like i it was bad enough that it had to make your bed this morning you're not my mom like brothers brothers like and how they're all scared shitless of levi and trying to live up to his standards this is also another sad thing that i said in the first vlog aaron was always squad levi he was squad levi from the moment he was in the survey corps so he's the only one who knows what levi wants what his standards are, what he likes, what he expects of them. Even though Levi doesn't really expect it of them, but Aaron's still trying to whip the others into shape. No wonder Levi thinks that Aaron's the best one at cleaning. He's the only one who remembers and respects that. He... I'm going to get emotional again because that's exactly what you needed from this vlog. But Jean and Aaron, yes. And Aaron and Levi finally being in a squad back together, yes. <laughs> Even though Levi is going to push him to his limits, but that's what dads do. <laughs> and he has just become both mother and father to them, and I love them so much. And Jean and Aaron are confirmed brothers. Did... Did I... Ma'am, did I just hear... Did I just tear up because I'm pretty sure that if it was in the show it's very momentary I don't know why it hit me this much maybe because there's more banter which is why it hit me like a truck but look at his I thought that was Levi look at his sad eyes as he remembers the old squad and then the new squad bickering him and Levi are the only ones who remember that I am <laughs> I'm still in pain because of because of Petra and old woe and eld and the other oh i'm still in pain mm, i hate parallels like this because they're so painful that's why aaron and levi are my favorites <laughs> it's gonna sound stupid like this because i understand everyone has been through crap but i feel like they understand each other each other on a very very deep level Levi sees a lot of himself in aaron and aaron really looks up to levi and every time the levi's like pull yourself together Aaron does like I love I love them I Levi's not even back yet and I, I'm already gushing here's another line that's different but it's freaking hilarious when they're just we should just lay low for now put off the experiments even though they go off to experiment immediately there's less explanations in the show but when Han's like when Levi says like so what we should just sit here and have tea parties well there's other stuff we could do inside like knitting <laughs> I love Hanji I love Hanji. Of course, Levi is not having it, but Hanji squad and Levi squad are everything. Funny to me how they cut out Levi having a lot of agency because, like, he chose his own squad. Now he's telling Hanji, like, you're feeling responsible. We don't have time for this. And then he's saying that, why did they cut all of that out? But anyway, I know they cut out a lot of Levi stuff from season three. As hard as that is to believe, considering he's literally the star of season three, but he's literally like, we, the way I see it, there's two paths we can go down. We can go outside before we're stabbed in the back, or we exterminate our would-be killers. Which do you choose, Hanji? Go before we're stabbed? Both. We'll do both at the same time. Huh. I guess that's exactly what Erwin would say. My heart just flutters when the veterans have their interactions. I... <laughs> Especially after I read the, like, the two books of short stories with them. Read them. Definitely read them. If the veterans aren't your favorites, how? But also, they will be. <laughs> they will be after you read the short stories. So, yeah, and I'm veering off course and I'm talking way too much. This is only volume one. But this is what I meant when I said I will have a lot to say because I know, despite how well they made season three, there's a lot of explanations and conversations that they cut out another small comment this is a difference from the show like the pacing of it is really different and i'm not sure why they chose to do it later i mean i sort of get it but historia 
tells her backstory here immediately. Aaron's like, oh, she's been like this since the first night we came here. Go off into the story of Historia Rice. So there's a little difference for you. I realize I've mostly been ranting my ass off, not really talking about differences, but yeah, here you go. Another bit that they cut out. They're like in a room and explaining all the experiments that they had Aaron do. I don't know why they're cutting out so much. They're cutting out actually important stuff on like season one. And then there's this whole speech by Levi. I thought I related to him before, but every single sentence that this man speaks, I'm like, sir, you are my soulmate. <laughs> because when Aaron's like, I couldn't harm my body. And then Levi goes off. That's exactly right. It was real disappointment to us and everyone's been miserable today because of it. We can't let any more time go to waste. What's next? Titans might, might rise up out of the ground. Maybe they'll come raining down from the sky and humanity is still a pack of toothless prey animals. In any case, we're in a shitty situation. <laughs> Amicus is trying to defend him and he's like, he did everything he could. I know that, but so what? Why does it matter that he tried his best? Right now he can't close up that hole. But blaming Aaron for that? Hold on, I'm just being an asshole. I'm not blaming him. Going over our shortcomings and bitching about our situation is an important ritual. I love how he's just like, hold on, I'm being an asshole. I'm not asshole. I'm not blaming him. I'm allowed to bitch and complain. This is kind of our ritual. Everything sucks for us. I could have heard Matthew Mercer saying those words, but you chose to not let me have that. Bitch. And it continues. I thought it was over, but this is literally the best and I have no idea why they cut it. Take a whiff. Inside these walls, the airs always stunk like trash. It's been that way for over a hundred years. We've always lived in shit. That's our situation. I just didn't notice it until a few years ago. After all, I've been sucked in this stink since the day I was born. I saw it as normal. But the air I breathed outside the walls was different. Yes, life out there is hell. But it's got something the walls don't. Freedom. Out there, I finally saw what I'd been missing. Cue the tears because no regrets. And his face when he saw the air for the first time. But Aaron, he said freedom it's even more emphasized in the manga just how similar aaron and levi are like tw not really 20 years apart but between 15 and 20 years apart in other words what levi is trying to say is we learned that you can't harden your body and that's a success <laughs> hanji's just trying to make him feel better a little bit we'll probably have to pay the price for letting off that smoke zone but our job right now is to make most of these results in other words let's keep fighting is that what you meant levi yeah, thanks for that. How oh, he couldn't put it into nice words. So Hanji did it for him. Absolute gold. This entire scene deserves to be animated. It really, really deserves to be animated. And now I'm upset because it's literally the best. And how he literally says outside the walls is freedom. Just how Levi like adopted Erwin's world worldview because he became someone he admired. Aaron adopted. Uh, or Levi and he looks up to him he was his number one fan so he kind of adopted his philosophies like outside the walls there's air there's freedom like he shared that before but now that Levi has said it Aaron will definitely be more motivated and I I cannot emphasize how much I love the two of them there's another little bit that I have to comment when they go into town and they go straight into town it's just structured differently there's a whole little bit where I was like, oh, Levi, humanity's strongest. Why are we suffering like this? Why are the Titans inside? He's kind of small. I only ever saw him on a horse. Levi's patience has reached God level. I am not there yet. But they just blame the Survey Corps for everything because they don't know shit. And they're like, a woman looks at Levi judgmentally and he even looks a bit sorry. And they're like, why do we have to suffer and not have anything to eat when the Survey Corps doesn't even earn their money and the food that they get? I am so disgusted. Do not dare disrespect the only people doing anything around here. I know you live far away from the action, but I am always so upset when people are ignorant to not know and to bitch to people who are the only ones actually assuring the survival and protection of all of them. You come into Levi's face, drag him, pull him, and try to punch him because he doesn't earn his keep. You have a lot of people. We're going to pimp sla slap you just for doing that. <laughs> and he literally warns them while he kicks them and kicks around. He's so cute in this. 
He's literally like, oh, there's a carriage. Watch out. He even protects them. Even he knew the carriage would come, but he even protects them even though they grabbed him literally violently because he understands their anger and pain because he was in the underground underneath the main city. So he definitely understands. I, I haven't reached his level of understanding and patience yet, but... Another small bit of er evidence that Aaron cares about John. He's like, he doesn't even look like me with that horse face of his. I hope he'll be all right. Yes. The fact that this is my favorite arc in the show. I am not even done with volume 13. There's everything is different. <laughs> like for starters, there's a whole conversation with Aaron and Historia where they bond and talk about their dreams. And he tells her the thing that they he told her in the cottage and they bond about stuff. <laughs> and then when they go and rescue Armin and John, it's Levi and Mikasa who jump the people. He didn't just fucking leave. I mean, I like in the show, he tells her, like, join me when you take out the trash on your own. I trust you. But they're together here. Of course he wouldn't leave them alone and go to Nifa. I'm going to see how he parts with them and goes to Nifa here. But why are you cutting out so much Levi contact? I understand you didn't have time to animate everything. But why'd you have to cut out everything about him? You made him hot, but that wasn't enough. We needed all of his banter. Levi musings. I will read out because excuse me. Here they took down the wreaths together, so he's with them immediately. It's not at the end of episode they rushed it so hard. Like it's Kenny at the end of episode one. It's not even near Kenny yet. But he's like, let's go outside. It's making it stuffy to be in your domain. He's talking to Reese. He's like, we'll keep your underlings here on the floor a little longer. And then he leaves with Reeves. You know, he says, it tells to Armin, it's all your fault. I used to be normal, but now look at me. Yeah, so you became gay. I mean, good for you. But now he's going out with Levi. And they're at the top of the wall. He literally took him through the wall and he's talking to me. Why did you take me all the way here? Do you know where this is, boss? This is my town. Trost's outer gate, or former outer gate. Humanity's southern front. The border between worlds. A frightening place, but lucrative. It was a good town. <sighs> We're gonna get even more of Levi's back. Or I'm, I'm gonna... And the fact that he took him all the way to the wall just to talk. I'll tell you what. We, we, I'll tell you what we call it. The phrase for humanity's... Humanity first defeated the Titans, and the place to prove humanity's powerlessness. We used the strength of a Titan to close a hole made by a Titan. We, tired, we tried a lot of things, but in the end, humans just couldn't match up. Of course, it's not as if a Titan's strength alone closed it. My, many soldiers gave their lives, too. I can't speak right now, apparently. It took all of that, plus a chain of countless miracles, to keep your town just barely standing here. And the source of those miracles is Aaron. That's what you tried to... Ch uh, snatch from us. So you took me here to lecture me? Please, soldier, give me a break. Being up here isn't easy on my body. You're right. Never mind. I hate having to see an old man get chewed out. Tell me, what was the point of the deal he made with the interior MPs? And he just is calmly sitting down. He's never losing his cool. Deal. There was never a deal. And then he says, or tells him everything. But I do have some good news for you, soldier. Those guys in the interior are idiots. Why are you cutting all of this out? I am so upset. You people go out to fight Titans. How are a handful of cheap thugs like us supposed to take care of you? What a bunch of morons. I mean, that girl over there brought us down single-handed. It's ridiculous. What do you say, soldier? Good tip, right? Yeah. We're apparently up against fools. I understand that much. But why are you letting these fools kill you off, boss? They're dumb, but they're the rulers of our world. The fools that kill and eat you people don't even wear clothes, right? I see. That's true. But we can kill the titans, too. If it's the same thing, if you're going to die anyway, you might as well try. No. Why not? If I fail, that just means more of my men will die. Don't worry. That'll happen either way. What was that? Trost District, your town, is on the verge of failure. It was once occupied by titans and is half annihilated. But there are, there are still people here. That's because there are engineers here who fill up and fortify the gate, and soldiers ready for a titan attack. But the Reeves company plays a major role too, by bringing people work. I am in love with you, sir. Why did they cut all of this out? At this rate, though, the Reeves company will disappear. That will be the final blow to this town. It'll stop functioning. Everyone will be leaving, living on the streets here, except the soldiers. How many of them will make it through the winter? Maybe you're right. 
being killed by the interior MPs would still be a more merciful way to go. Well, it's inevitable now. Because you won't give us earning, Krista. Countless people will die. So, to keep the people here from dying out, will you hand over your two treasures? That's exactly right. I'll give you Aaron and Krista. And Mikasa just loses her shit. Captain Levi. But you'll have to accept three conditions. One, from now on, the Reeves Company will join the Survey Corps in opposing the Interior Police Brigade as well as the Royal Government and his decrees. This is where smart Levi pe peaks. Like, he's a really good leader and really smart and clever and composed when he has to be. He just isn't often. What? Are you telling me to start a war? Two. He's just continuing on. The Reeves Company will trust the Survey Corps wholeheartedly. Trust you? We're merchants. I'm not speaking to you, to a merchant. I'm speaking to you, Demo Reeves. I'm asking you about how you live your life. What kind of a man are you? Will you let your men and the people of this town die and accept defeat? Or will you face the rulers of our world and fight? Even I don't know what the right answer is. You're free to choose. What kind of an idiot accepts a contract without hearing all the conditions? Oops, my apologies. My apologies. Three. From now on, the Survey Corps will receive priority access to any rare or luxury food, drink, or product the Reeves Company obtains. Tea, for example. I love how he forgot about the third condition, so he was like, I will receive tea for my efforts. <laughs> fantastic. That's a fantastic condition, Captain. <laughs> and Sasha... <laughs> I'm sorry, but that makes me laugh because Sasha was like, I probably won't steal any food, but now that Levi's made, like, we, we will be first to receive luxury food and tea. And she's like, that's a fantastic condition, Captain. You go. <laughs> and Orm is like, Sasha. Seems you're even greedier than a merchant. I like that. You're a smart man. We have a deal. They don't even make the deal in the show. They just jump straight to Kenny, like, Wit, I have many bones to pick with you. What the hell did you, what were you thinking to cut all of this beautiful stuff out? Like, what is the matter with you? <laughs> you, you made Levi hot, but you refused to show that he was really fucking clever too. My hair is a mess right now, but they just mess up the order of everything here. It makes sense. I made a deal with Reeves, so they got... Sana's and the men. He met up with Hanji and now it's the torture scene. They scrambled the whole damn thing in the show. They just jumped straight to Kenny and then went back to torture later. Like, I'm gonna be so confused when I watch the show now because do not get me wrong, I love every single second of season three. Just this volume, the entire thing was cut out. The entire thing was cut out. This volume would be the prime example of why you should read the manga, if anyone asks. Volume 13. I'm pretty sure there's going to be more examples, but okay. A lot of context and like explanations was cut out. So <laughs> motivations and character aspect. I'm so confused. To mention that scrambling the plot, like here during the torture, Aaron and Krista are still with them. The way they made it in the show, Aaron, I no wonder the people who only watch the show are like, oh my God, Aaron gets kidnapped all the time because Aaron gets kidnapped literally immediately. Kenny is in episode two. Aaron gets taken in episode two. He's not around for half of this stuff. I have no idea what the creative choice was there. What, what creative choice that was with, but thank you for the action. But I don't, I don't understand. This is just going to be a quick little clip because it's past midnight. I've read like four or five volumes. I don't even know at this point. Five. <laughs> but I've been talking for so long and I will see you tomorrow for the rest and I hope that not that much has been cut out because otherwise I'm gonna have to make a vlog three and I dread doing that it's gonna be so long I'll see you tomorrow welcome back it is many days later because it's been so hot where I live that I am barely functioning but today I finally mustered the strength to continue reading now i have fallen out of the mood a little bit because i've been consuming other content but i am not one really to leave something i started unfinished so we are pushing through anyway and we're doing volume 14 today we're gonna hopefully finish all of it today because i have a lot of time if not, we're just going to do box set one and then continue on tomorrow. But I need a clean slate before I go down to the coast for my vacation. 
and I am rambling too much now, but I felt like updating even though there has been no break for you. But yeah, volume 14. Let's see if it says different from everything else, just like volume 13 was. There's already a difference, but one that we've already established because Aaron is here with them throughout the torture and they're planning with him. He wasn't just kidnapped like a little bitch. <laughs> And the Survey Corps are actually a whole lot more a hardcore and badass here. I mean, for one, the torture was a whole lot more brutal. And for another thing, here Aaron is the one who goes down to Hanji when she kicks down the table, not Levi. And he talks to her and this is where he tells her all the stuff that he knows about Bertolt and Emir, Everything that he heard. So basically they just scrambled the hell out of season three because at this point in season three we have already seen kenny we've not even seen kenny once yet but no idea what the why this decision was made but the way that it's made is so much more clever and that's me saying who loves the show because here levi is actually a, an integral part of the plan because he got the trust of the Reeves company, he's working with them like, we need to be able to trust you, we're working with you. And they have this great dynamic and relationship. I prefer this to the show. Like, season three was done beautifully. And I'm happy that they nailed all of the action. But this is the first time that in both of these blogs, I will have to say that you should read the manga. Because it's not the same and a lot of things are more clever or better explained in the manga so this is where i will give you the disclaimer to pick up the manga maybe from just from season three vol or volume 13 if you need it for reference pick it up because it's not not the same <laughs> two seconds but here they immediately tell historia that she needs to be queen like not after the entire mission with rod rice they immediately tell her right you need to be you need to be queen. I forgot to tell my squad the real family is the Rice family. Like, he tells her here <laughs> that she needs to be queen. It's so... It's not a little difference either because they shifted the motivations of all the characters and it's so confusing in the show now that I think about it. Season 3 is literally my favorite but right now I'm so confused about how they even pieced it together like that. It seems so chaotic. And I know that Levi is a little bit more aggressive in being, <laughs> in convincing her here. He's like, do it. You are going to be queen. <laughs> he literally, <laughs> I mean, he's, he, I mean, Manga Levi <laughs> has a lot of balls. Manga Levi is not afraid to rough you up if that's what it takes. He's literally like, okay, so you won't be ruler of humanity. He picks up his story and he's like, okay, then run away. Run away from us as fast as you can because we're going to do anything and everything to make you do what we want. If you don't like it, fight. Beat me back. And I mean, these these suck. This speech from him sucks. But he is such a freaking badass here. Like, in the show, I always hated, hated how they blamed Levi for making her queen. Because he was just relaying orders. And the whole punch that she does to him never made sense. But here it absolutely makes sense. He picks her up and is like, fight me. If you don't want to do what I tell you, then fight me. And it makes sense. When they do what they do later, I, I am in love once again. <laughs> and I will read you the speech because it's great. He's literally like, will there still be tomorrow? Do you believe everyone will still be around? I never think so. And I doubt normal people think about these things on a daily basis. So that means I'm abnormal. Probably because I've seen far too many abnormal things. But if all roads were breached tomorrow and we faced an emergency, I'd be faster than any of you to react and to fight. I'll fight even if I have to face that hell again tomorrow. You've all seen terrible things, too. 
and there might very well be more waiting for you tomorrow. I want to put an end to that recurring nightmare right now. There are those who would get in my way, but I'm fine playing the role of lunatic who kills people like that. I have to be ready to rearrange some faces because I choose the hell of humans killing each other over the hell of being eaten. At least that way, all of humanity doesn't have to be damned. Of course, there's another way. If we could simply seize control of this world, then a lot of people who would have died will live. That'd be nice, right? It's all up to you, Historia. Follow or fight. I don't care which. Just choose one right now. We don't have any time. Everyone is like, Erwin could tell me to kill myself and I would. But Levi? <laughs> Levi. <laughs> it's beautiful to me how he convinces them. He never like forces them. He convinces them to realize it on their own. She's like, all right, I'll do it. The next role I have to play is queen. Fine, leave it to me. All right, stand. We're counting on you love it love it i am i'm falling in love with levi all over again i didn't expect this <laughs> cheers and there's another bit that i want to talk about i'm a little quiet because people are outside but <clears throat> i love the bit where it's actually clever like aaron and historia didn't get snatched at all they're actually given to the Reeves company and they're going to be pretend taken to Rod Rice, who they already know is her dad. Like, there's no surprise for Historia. No, like, Historia is, has, to, has to defect and stuff. They all know the plan from the beginning. And then, uh, Flagon, I think, says, like, what kind of punk would rough up a little girl? And then the old Reeves guy actually defends Levi and I think he says some very nice things. He's like, that awkward yet kind man is being true to his word when he says he'll protect us in the barely alive district of trust, even though he really doesn't have to. A man like that must have come from absolutely nothing, so Missy, excuse me, your highness. I know your boss is a scary man, but he's not a bad guy. Once you become queen, smack him and tell him this. I tell you to, I dare you to hit me back. <laughs> I like that. You should do that, Historia. Aaron says this. <laughs> How do you think he'll react? And this is where the old Reeves guy goes out to take a leak, and that's when Kenny kills him, and Kenny comes into the picture. I was always so upset, <clears throat> so upset by how that didn't make sense in the show that Aaron is constantly kidnapped. And I have to say that this part of the manga is my favorite so far because it already it gives more meaning and more sense and more Levi scenes and monologues to a part that I already loved so much. So this is absolutely an improvement. I am so not sorry that I'm reading this bit. And they gave Kenny such an iconic entrance here. And he's going to talk to Reeves, actually. And now they're going to talk about Levi. This is the bit that I said that always gets me. And the fact that they cut that out physically hurts me. And, like, Aaron has his little blades between his fingers and in his mouth, which I think is really cool. By the way, Reeves, do you know a man named Levi Ackerman? Levi Ackerman. I'd never heard his full name, but you're talking about Captain Levi of the Survey Corps, right? You'd be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't, and of course I'd know about a man who seems to be out to kill us. He's probably searching like mad for those two brats we snapped. You'll do something about that, right? I taught Levi a lot. That midget is my pride and joy. That bit gets me every time. Why was that cut? Do you know a man named Levi Ackerman? <laughs> that minute is my pride and joy. I can just feel my heart clenching in pain. That's why it's really my fault that this is happening. And Kenny kills the guy in the woods. I love this so much because it's actually so beautiful and clever. And he's like, this is actually kind of my fault. He's my pride and joy and I taught him a lot. The reunion is going to hurt even more now with this. As you predicted, they were hiding a number of blades. And now we're going to get the scene that everyone knows, which is the Kenny scene, but... Why I move all the emotional depth? This is 
like the plot is a little bit weird at this point. I mean, a all the kids are little bitches <laughs> who are bitching and moaning about Levi and how he is a bit too ruthless. We won't kill people. Anyway, but Meeks is like, I've always noticed something was off about that shorty. Meeks, I will bitch slap you, I swear to God. But now Levi and Nifa and the others are all control looking at Kenny and the others are stuffing coffins. <laughs> like, Aaron and Historia are inside coffins. And now the fight is going to go down. But what I absolutely love is how important Levi was in all of this. Because it was his plans, his quick thinking, his no bullshit attitude, and his past that literally saved all of them in the entire situation. It's not that apparent in the show. In fact, not at all. But here it is like, Levi is vital to everything. Him, Hanji, and Erwin are the goats. And I will hear absolutely no slander about them literally not the kids all annoy me right now <laughs> like the kids all annoy me right now get off your high horse bestie because and this bit when he figures out that kenny's there is so much more satisfying than in the show because he's actually like they figured out reeves was on our side they think they tend to think like me well maybe more like him and this is how he figures out that it's kenny And this is when it happens. Nifa dies. Levi barely, barely gets away. I love this scene. It is everyone's favorite for a reason. Hey, Levi, look at how you've grown. No, you really haven't changed much, have you, Kitty? <laughs> I mean, obviously, this is not going to be as fun here, but it makes, it adds so much depth to the entire scene. And Levi actually mourns Nifa a whole lot more here. He even looks back at her before he flees. Then he grits his teeth in, like, pain. He, damn it, he can read my every move. How are you an MP? This this scene obviously is the best one in the anime. <laughs> it took them two months to animate it, which kind of makes sense. But I want to see if there's any new dialogue here. Because like, this is better when it's in action, but... I'm here, Kenny. Been a while. Let me see your face. Are you kidding me? You just sprayed it with a shotgun. I'm here to sit today to see what color your brains are. I didn't think you were still alive, Kenny. So you're an MP now. After killing that many of them. To be honest, this is the first time I've ever laughed at one of your jokes. <laughs> never thought this is how you'd use all those trick tricks I thought. Yeah, though I would have never tried to hide in a saloon like this. I love him, I love him, I love him. So, Levi, I think I understand why you joined the Survey Corps. You kill two when it benefits you, right? Yeah. The gun thing when he does it over the counter is my favorite moment literally ever in the history of ever <laughs> I'm holding this because I don't want to miss anything <sighs> Levi I love you more than anything and I love you even more now <laughs> that shrimp must have gotten better in his own way that wasn't an easy task yeah, he did get better on his own way. He was fighting literally every day of his life since you left him. But they found the captain. Let's go. Now they're going to go and meet up with... I, this is so much better than the show. <laughs> and this is me saying it. Season 3 is my favorite. This is also so clever because while they're running, they're all taking... They're like plan B, plan A. What? Like They're so in sync. Levi's squad is so in sync here. He is giving orders left and right. He can't 
myth. My love for this man is skyrocketing right now. He's literally like, you will provide fire, you will do the horses, we have to go away because they're probably going to ambush us. Like, his cleverness is oftentimes very underrated because his equals are Erwin and Hanji, who are both more intellectual than battle-hardened, but Levi. <laughs> I know I said Aaron was my favorite character. But I think it's always going to be Levi, no matter what. He's like, we have to find a different way. And I love how he knows exactly what each of their strengths are. They're like, you provide fire because you're a great shot. You do go get the horses. Armin, go left to open ground. And Mika, say you're going to go with me because you're the strongest, obviously. Like, yes. <laughs> this is this is so good. And here we have Mika, Sai, and Levi. It's, yeah, I have nothing else to say. I love it. And here, when they're getting them out of the coffins, Kenny and Aaron actually also have an interaction. <laughs> hey, Aaron. <laughs> and like how they're like, oh, so here's, he's an irredeemable bastard. Like, his story already hates Rod Rice here. Well, in any case, this was great. This was great. I finished volume 14. This was absolutely great. Nothing like the show, but I loved it so much. And my love for Levi is beyond everything else. He is everything to me. So let's just move on quickly to volume 15, which is here. And let's see how this plays out because I want to know if the second half is also different from the manga or not. Here we are, the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> because now they're in a barn, not in the middle of the city. They're in a barn in the woods. And Sasha is just chilling. Like, just chilling while she's patching up the prettiest man on this planet. That meme, you wish that was you, huh? <laughs> it's so accurate in this regard. She's like, Yep, I'm patching you up. I'm like, I always thought this was a little bit unrealistic because I can't imagine Levi of all people in front of the kids just going like, okay, let's take the shirt off, patch me up. This looks like barely a cut. But in any case, <laughs> it's pretty much everything I need. And they're in a cabin in the woods, not in the middle of town. And now he's gonna help them again, help them deal with the fact that they killed someone. And how he actually understands them, knows exactly what they're worried about, exactly what they're thinking. I love you. <laughs> Except who you've become, if your hands are still clean, John wouldn't be here with us right now. I love how he helps them always realistically figure it out, not just like suck it up but like would you want your john to die you're able to pull the trigger because your friend was about to die you're smart you understood that there was no room then for hesitation or compromise you knew we couldn't afford to lose anything if we wanted to keep hope alive goods horses comrades armin you saved us but getting your hands dirty and i'm grateful he always helps them by taking on the burden sort of he's like i knew you had to do this and i'm grateful that you did and he always tells them everything. Like, it was your hesitation, John, that you put us in danger. I'm sorry, but that was then and there. That's it. I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. I certainly don't know what is. Were you really wrong? Yes. 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 This is a Levi Ackerman supremacy. So much quicker here that they actually got the MPs. They were like, in and out, Marlo Hitch, let's go. And he's like, nice, nice mustache you have there. That gives me such a vibe of like, would be a shame if someone were to... Cut it off. Where are Krista? Did you kill my men? Unfortunately for you, they won't be coming to your rescue. Killing them would have been a bother, so we just... So they'll just be off their feet for the time being. Oh, he literally cut their feet. 
as he should, an icon. <laughs> you think you're something special. You think cutting down a bunch of unarmed MPs makes you a hero. Some of them were just servants. I see. What a horrible thing we've done. <laughs> I feel awful for all of you, too. And I feel especially bad about your mouth. I suggest using it while you're still able to speak. I love how he just shows his foot in there. Like, he is an ex criminal of the underground like I, I love that in the dub actually he's like mm, i see yes the guilt staring me apart <laughs> the sass of this man i think it's such a poor decision i mean the entirety of the ending arc is stupid but i think it would have been actually iconic if <laughs> levi and hanji joined Aaron and have figured out what he was doing because i think they needed to be I think the the kind of person that Levi is, I think he should have figured out what Aaron was doing and I would have I kind of grew to dislike him when he was against Aaron. But <laughs> in any case, he is an icon. Use your lives to save theirs. That's it. I'll pass. Just tell me where Aaron and Krista are. <laughs> He's the best. So you're going to let your comrades die? What a strong bond you have with each other. Well, some sort of core lives are worth more than others. We're aware of that. And then he just breaks him up and he's like, Stop screaming. Tell me where Aaron and Krista are. What he is, is an icon. I don't know. They barely tell us anything. Kenny Ackerman is extremely tight-lipped. Ackerman? That's the bastard's last name? I suppose he doesn't give out many details, especially important ones. But you must have an inkling, right? Maybe I can jog your memory. You still have a lot of bones left. You, you're a madman. Maybe. We know what scene that is. <laughs> <sighs> yeah how they found Levi is still hilarious to me we're friends of the short guy could you take me to where they are and how loyal Moblet is to Hanji I love them now they're gonna go get Aaron I love how it's everything so so much more clever here. I actually love it. And Marlo is here with them. I don't remember Marlo riding with them. Aaron's just had enough of being kidnapped. Here we actually see like how he ripped apart Grisha. Oh, we're done with volume 15. We're gonna go to volume 16 and this is the best, but now it's gonna be the Kenny backstory and the Ackerman backstory, which is my absolute favorite everything <laughs> you can tell that Kenny's Aaron Ackerman because when asked with why he is still here he's like I'm just looking for the bathroom I gotta go number two apparently it's in the Ackerman family genes to talk about poop iconic iconic I know right <sighs> oh, 
Kenny is chaotic, but he is an icon. And he is the moment. And they're all gonna go there, even though Lever and the others are gonna get there first, obviously, but ah, oh, there. Let's finally talk about Kenny. Kenny the Ripper, he'll be the biggest obstacle if he's there. Think of him as like me, but on the enemy side. No, with all those weapons, he'll be even harder to deal with. <laughs> that we can't possibly beat him. <laughs> How is it that you don't know more about Kenny the Ripper? Didn't you live with him? Sorry, I didn't even know his last name. Apparently it's Ackerman. Think you're related? <laughs> well, in any case, Mika said, Did you ever experience a moment in your life when it felt as though a sudden power, uh, power woke inside you suddenly? Yeah. Kenny Ackerman told me he had a moment like that, too. One day, all at once, he felt a stupid amount of strength surge through his body. And he knew exactly what to do. I had a moment like that, too. And that's all we ever get. That is all we ever get of the Acker talk. We never see them talk again after he actually knows that he's an Ackerman. And that is such an opportunity wasted. Because both of them don't have any family left. I hate this. I absolutely hate this. Of course, we have the iconic bit where Kenny is like, okay, like the speech is a bit longer than when he actually tells his story, and I love Kenny so much. Just like Levi, he has so many actual layers. I love, love Kenny and Levi. And then they go to save Aaron, who it breaks my heart that he actually believes that he's in the wrong here and that he's weak and that he's pointless. But then, <laughs> but then Jean's like, you hear me, shirtless wonder? <laughs> we need to run away. Well, first of all, the roof's going to collapse. <laughs> I love them. I love them so much when they finally rescue him. I think it was honestly a disgrace to tear them apart. Like, Aaron did all of that to protect them, but they didn't even freaking figure that out. And poor Kenny, he actually does sort of care about his squad. And Aaron's just so pretty here. I was useless from the beginning. I was never humanity's hope. I'm so sorry. I love him more than anything. Love him more than anything. What, now you want to play tragic hero? It'd be hard to escape even if we didn't have to carry Aaron in Historia as we flew. I'm sorry for always doing this to you, but Aaron, you gotta make a choice. <laughs> And here it's actually like a flashback of, sorry, it's a flashback of that scene. My heart. Just once let me believe in myself. Yeah, we're done with volume 16. I have one left in the box set and then I'm done for the day, but this has been absolutely great. I love it so much more than the show and Levi. Levi and Kenny are fascinating characters and they're the best for a reason. Although to be fair, there's a detail that I didn't know from the show and that's the fact that the two bloodlines that can resist it are Asians and the Ackermans. And even though Levi is a pure Ackerman much more than Mika says she's a combination of the two two bloodlines that can resist the king so I do kind of get how he wanted to her to be important because she is from the Asians and the Ackermans which means that she literally can't be controlled by the king which is pretty cool to me and I'm still so upset that they didn't acknowledge the fact that they're related but yeah loved that and let's do volume 17 Aaron is just so pretty and so precious and beautiful. Now they're gonna run away and we're gonna get the chapter where Kenya and Levi talk, which is, I'm gonna need therapy after that one. I also love how it's like her showdown here is absolutely with Levi. She has no beef with Erwin. She goes to Levi and she's like, I thought I ordered you to be in a safe place. You told me to either fight or run, so I'm gonna fight. And he's like, damn it, we have no time for this. Levi's role for all of his spotlight in season three, Levi's role was really diminished like people who are fans of Levi 
and don't read the manga miss out on a lot like a lot yeah that's all i have for now but and now we have the scene where rod rice got up and how levi is still so kind and considerate he's like able to do everything that needs to be done but he's still a really good person which is why i love him he's just like he sees that the garrison is scared shitless so he's like get down there we'll take over from here this is our daily job you go take care of the people and this scene he looks so pretty when he is drenched but yeah and aaron's aaron's back which is everything that we love Yeah, in any case, I love them. The survey core are everything, and I hate that the full story shifted from them. Like, I ever, given that I know everything that happens from now on, this would have so benefited from being over after season three. We don't know how long Kenny was actually with Levi, but he probably cut his hair and he fed him and he was with him for a while. He probably even brought him above ground for a little while, and I... I love it so much. She's like, I was not going to leave him to die, but I wasn't mad enough to be his dad. There was a lot I could teach him, but he taught him everything he needed to survive. He, and he wanted to go to the surface. He was free to. He'd have to do it himself. He actually, it breaks my heart when he actually leaves Levi and when Levi asks him, why did you leave me? But I understand his reasoning and he was still kind enough to leave him with all the skills and tricks that he was going to need. And he made a man of himself, a very good man of himself on his own. And Kenny said, "I'm that little midget does my pride and joy." And and that's all that I have to say on that. And Uri, Uri and Kenny, I freaking love their their like dynamic, their relationship. That is precious to me, absolutely precious. So I don't think I'm gonna cry, but when Levi and Kenny have to talk, I am not gonna be okay. The fact that he raised a kid. Like this, these words actually got to me so as long as you have power at the very least you won't meet an end like my little sisters this is why he raised Levi to be who he is and this freaking breaks my heart every time and I love how he is actually so devoted to Uri because he's like I know I'm pathetic and I've always used violence but I do trust you and I'll follow your lead just like Levi always does he's also really clever and capable but he's always like I'll follow your lead just like Mika said they're not leaders they're just very very good followers and not in a submissive way but in a very beautiful way actually kind of we're up to the Kenny thing I hate it because he grabs him and he's like tell me everything you know my last name seems to be Ackerman, too. What what were you to my mother? The fact that he thought that he's his dad. But he might as well have been. Who else would have been dad to Levi? He was the closest thing to it. <laughs> you idiot. I was just her brother. His face, like his eye. It looks like a little boy. But I think they did this better in the dub. Because he asks. It was an intentional choice, I think, that he says, What were you to my mom? Not mother. It makes it a little bit more personal and he sounds really vulnerable in that scene. Matthew Mercer. But, like his face, how they did it beautifully, how he drew his face to look like a child. And then the transition to him is actually a child. Like how his eyes spread and he's like, okay, so you are actually family. My name seems to be Ackerman too. What were you to my mother? Oh, I was just her brother. And he realizes that he is his family. He was his uncle. And he's like, that day, why did you leave me? And just how his face turns so young again when he asks that. Someone who has been hardened over the last, like, what, 20 years since Kenny left him. Because I can't be some damn kid's dad. Just the faces of everything. It's, it breaks my freaking heart, this scene, every time, because, like, when he does that, and his face, and his last words are, like, just a silent little Kenny, and then that's it. The fact that this poor child, poor man, learned that he had family just as they die, it's the curse of his life. 
as soon as he gets something that he's always longed for, it's taken away from him. Which is why I think it was very vital that he actually acknowledged the fact that he is Mikasa's cousin, relative, whatever. They're all that they have left. And the fact that he didn't hide that he was an Ackerman, because everyone else later knew he was an Ackerman. Zeke heard that he was an Ackerman, which means that he started introducing himself like that, even though everyone knows him as Levi or Captain Levi. That means that he actively claimed the Ackerman name. And later he was like, Ackermans and shifters can't. Like, he used that name proudly after this. And I think it would have been really cool to acknowledge that the last two Ackermans are actually exactly that. We, <laughs> we never got a scene between them where they talk about it or even acknowledge it a little bit which I think is a wasted opportunity because we know Mikasa would have appreciated it and as we can see Levi really longed for family because he never had it so yeah this absolutely tore me apart but that was a waste and next time that I will talk to you will be right now because when she goes to punch Levi that's my favorite scene ever I love that, how they're all scared shitless when she punches Levi Mikasa's grinning. And it always breaks my heart. This face that he makes, because, like, this is after he just learned that the last of his family died. Except for Mikasa. But he's just like, thanks, th thank you, all of you. This is so pitiful and pathetic. And cute, but thank you all of you. I'm so grateful that I have you and I love you guys. That's what he, it means in Levi language. And he's just like, thank you, all of you. This actually made me laugh. And I appreciate all of you and that you're at my side. So yeah. <sighs> I didn't think my love for Levi could get stronger. But then this reread said, bet. I actually love the relationship between Historia and Levi. Like, Historia was severely sidelined after this, and I love Historia. But her and Levi's relationship is actually really good here. Because he taught her to be strong, and she actually also really respects him. So she got him on board to help with the kids, and he probably told her where to find everyone in the underground. And I love their relationship and how it actually developed. And I'm very sad that she was sidelined after this, because I love her and how strong she is. But... From now on, we're going to have to focus on Aaron because <laughs> goodbye Historia and Levi is going to be just a fighting machine from now on. On that note, there is something that we've already established that I really fucking love and that's how Levi treats Aaron. He really respects his resolve and how dedicated he is because, and I love when characters who are obviously really powerful never look down on you. Like you always make the effort of coming down on their level. So Levi literally comes down to Aaron's level, kneels next to him, gives him a handkerchief, helps him wipe, wipe himself. He's like, it's from overusing his powers. He's doing nothing but hardening experiments lately. We should assume that there's a limit to what his body can do. But we know that if it was Levi in that posi position, he would do exactly what Aaron is doing and exhaust himself trying to get to the solution. And Aaron's like, there's no need to say that just because I'm a little tired, let's move on, let's make more. So yeah, I love, I love Levi with his children, that's all I want to say. And especially with Historia and Aaron, because I, I mean, if you love any of the other characters, good for you. But I think Historia and Aaron are actually the ones who've been through the most shit and had the most growth and strength of character. And that's why they're my favorite of Levi's squad. I, I love both of them so much. I also adore when Erwin asks Levi, like, will you take it? You have the highest chance of survival. And he's like, you should just give me the order. There's no need to ask me. But he's like, I trust you also because you can make very swift decisions. It's basically acknowledging that they know how clever and actually competent he is. And he's like, all right, understood. I'll do it. <laughs> I will say this for the last time, but my love for this man knows no bounds, and I can understand if you don't, like, simp for him. I cannot understand if you hate him. I literally can't. 
We're done with volume 17, which means that we have completed box set one of season three. I'm trying to shove it in without wrinkling it. Anywho, this has been completed. And next up, we're going to do box set two and finally wrap up this lengthy vlog. If this is too long, I'm going to make a short part three. But if it's as long as the last one, I might just post post it for the hell of it because who even watches these but me this is for me to look back on but yeah this was absolutely great I have nothing else to say except for the fact that it's really really different from the show really 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 different from the show and I can't wait to see what they do with the rest so yeah the action is beautiful in the show but they eliminated everything else literally so I will see you tomorrow no break for you but a break for me evening we are absolutely <laughs> back to the party the last box set let's go and <laughs> we're gonna wrap up this lengthy vlog starting with volume 18 i hope that this will not be as lengthy as the first one but at the same time i don't really know so let's just move on with volume 18 but considering that this is mostly action at least in the show I'm assuming that it's gonna go quickly. I love when they're talking to Shadis now, like nothing, nothing different to report, but how <laughs> we already know that Levi's the most emotional character in this show, but it's hilarious to me how he's also kind of actually the most compassionate. Like he comforts the kids all the time. He reassures them, encourages them, gives it to them how it is so they would feel better, thanks them when they killed someone though, so they will feel better and understand that it wasn't for nothing and like now when she's laying into shadis she's like really childish reason inferiority complex he's the one who says hanji stop and i just want to say that i love that i love that i feel like that's all i've been saying this vlog is how much i love levi but what else is new hanji used to have a big crush on shadis i know we know nothing of hanji's past but a crush on Keith? I mean, fair. Fair enough. <laughs> Questionable taste, but it's when they're talking outside, this is a little bit different. Like after dinner, I mean, first of all, Levi is wearing all black here and I'm imagining Levi in a black shirt. Like they gave us the white shirt and he is ridiculously pretty in that scene. But imagine Levi in a black shirt. <laughs> Wit, season three, Levi in a black shirt. But here they're not actually on the stairs. They're just like outside of a barn or no, outside of a building. Like just not on a very long stairwell. That's like the only difference. And we see Levi a whole lot sooner. Like we see him in several panels. Like as you can see, here he is on the right and there he is standing on the left. We see him a lot more often, actually. And the parallel with Isabella and Ferlin is physically painful. Yeah, I, I hate this panel. Like, I absolutely fucking hate it. How he just came to listen to them, or maybe even... He almost looks like he's smiling, but how he came to listen to them, maybe look after them and make sure they go back all right, I don't know what his motivation there was, but it definitely reminds him of Isabella and Ferlin and that hurts like a bitch. Because if he sees a lot of himself in Aaron, then that means that Ferlin and Isabella are literally Armin and Mikasa. And it hurts like a bitch. It hurts like a bitch, that's all I will say. I am just a little bit upset that they exchanged it for the white shirt. It looks good, but Levi is in black. It's something that we deserved before season four. This is like a little clip that like when someone actually calls out to Levi and they're like, thank you for saving this time. Please come back safely. And he's so surprised, but then he sees the woman in the street that I think he saw like eyeing him back in town where they when they told like when the soldiers beat him around i think that's the same woman who was watching him and he's he smiles a little like i'm doing my best there like where my hand is he looks like he's almost smiling like with his eyes 
<laughs> and yeah, I knew I said I wouldn't comment as much, so I'm doing my best, but they are, they are precious, and this is where they all get decimated, so like, give me a minute. Like, from now on, it's just gonna be action, so. This is also a line that Levi says to Erwin when Aaron tells Armin that day I saw a look in her eyes. You looked like you were having an amazing dream, a dream I couldn't see. That's when I knew for the first time I wasn't free. That's exactly how Levi felt and no regrets and that's how he felt with Erwin because he saw someone having a dream that he couldn't see and realized that he wasn't free. So he decided to follow that person with the dream and that's exactly what's happening here. And I love... I love the little details. I think Isam was really great when he was doing what he was good at. When he started expanding it and trying to make you care for all the sides, it wasn't good. <laughs> he was really good when he was focusing on this, on how this chunk of humanity is dealing, how they're going through life, how they're dealing with a threat, how they are dealing with their own morals. Like that was the good part of the entire thing. When he tried to make it something that wouldn't work, that's when it got chaotic. And that's why we're going to stop at volume 23. Now, this is where the annoying plot convenience thing happens. Or rather, plot armor for Rhino because he should have died. Like, you have Levi's reflexes. Levi's. Like, he pokes his head out of the hole and Levi is already on him. Stabbed him through the neck. Left a blade in there. Stabbed him again and was pushing him down from an altitude. If there was no plot convenience, this would obviously not be a thing. Like, the whole spread through here. It's stupid. But <laughs> the way that it's worded here is a little weird because Levi says, It came so close, but I couldn't end his life. It doesn't sound like I didn't manage to kill him. It sounds like he couldn't kill him, which would be severely out of character, in my opinion. Because Levi didn't have a relationship with Rhina. He didn't even know Rhina. So the wording of I couldn't end his life is a little pointless. He could just say I didn't manage to kill him or he refused to die even with a blade stuck through his neck. Like I think that's done better in the anime. It sounds like he didn't succeed rather than I couldn't end his life. So yeah, that's just a little observation. This is an uglier angle and I will fix it because my phone is charging right now. But, volume 19, let's go. It's time for the showdown and obviously this bit is definitely better in the show because you can see everything and there's a score and it, it's just better. But let's just move on because we only have a little, little bit left. I love, love... I mean, hate, really, but I love the characterization of how Levi really only sees himself worthy as a fighter. Because when he feel, fails to kill Rhina, and now Erwin told him, I'm, you're the only one I can trust to take down the Beast Titan, he's like, understood, I'll make up for failing to kill the brat earlier, I will kill the Beast Titan. He only puts value on himself as a useful soldier. Like, hate to reference anything from it. <laughs> The Marley arc, but when he says to Armin and the others, like, I, if I rest any longer, you'll forget about me. He literally thinks they all only care about him because he's useful. And that's just freaking heartbreaking. <laughs> so, do with that what you will, but I hate it. We absolutely love to see it. How he's like, mop up the runts now before the Beast Titan moves. No casualties. I forbid you to die. Damn it, what a lap down. <laughs> the weak ones die so fast. I hate weaklings. <laughs> well, to be fair... I think Levi would hate all of his fangirls. We're all weak as shit. <laughs> but to be fair, this is our reality. I have no idea who, who or what I would be in that reality. So, but yeah, I love this. I love this bit so much. He's literally like, I forbid you to die. <laughs> yes, sir. I love the cover of this one, of volume 20, because it's Levi suffering, as usual. But he looks so pretty. And I don't know why they gave them the elbow things, but... And the symbolism of how it's combined, like, it's a combination of Erwin charging and Levi just absolutely wrecked on the ground. Yeah, I finished volume 19. There's nothing different here and it's about to go down. It's about to go down. I remember just feeling so crushed the first time that I watched this. So, yeah, we only have a little, little bit left, but I think, I'm not sure if they get demolished in chapter 20 or 21, but in any case... This is literally it.
the reason why the thing with Erwin is so sad is because, like, all he wanted was the dream. But they, they later reflect that if you have something you want that much and you get it, then that's kind of it for you. You have nothing else. But in the words of Tangled, you find a new dream. <laughs> and when Levi tells him, because he can see that he's having a tough time with it, he's literally like, I'll make the choice for you then. Lead them straight to hell and save us. I'll take down the beast titan. I get chills to this every time. Like, the whole scene, my soldiers scream out, my soldiers rage. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether I should cry yet at that time because I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but I absolutely bawled at what happened after with the Armin and Erwin choice. Like, I was a mess. So, it's not going to be as emotional because there's no music right now and music usually gets me going. But, yeah, I absolutely hate hate this bit. I hate it, but it really does make you feel like there was actually a worthy sacrifice for them winning. So, Mazel tov. Talk about how emotional the scene is, like when Levi comes to shred Zeke, it's my favorite thing ever in the history of ever. And I'm pretty sure everyone would agree because it's epic. <laughs> but I love how he always converses with the people he killed. He's like, mind if I cut off your heart, arms and hands? arms and hands arms and legs but now he's like when Piek takes him off he's like hey where are you where are you going stop I'm not done with you yet <laughs> because like yeah Zeke will absolutely answer you but <sighs> wait I swore to him that I'd kill you no matter what I swore to him yep Exactly. You go, Icon. And Flock is literally the only survivor. I can't believe that. But I need a little break right now, then I'll be right back. Why do I keep saying that? It's not a break for you. <laughs> Had to move to the room because some people have chosen to go to sleep before midnight. But yeah, I finished volume 20. It was epic. And now it's going to be the emotionally nerve-wracking one, which is <laughs> volume 21. I I get why they changed it for the anime because they all look kind of the same to be honest. Like Aaron and Levi literally look the same. I'm sure he has black hair and he has dark brown, but they look identical. And so do Mikasa and Hanji, and Mikasa is actually supposed to be another race. Like they all look the same. So I'm glad that they gave them some recognizable features. And we only have two more volumes and then we're done with Attack on Titan. I hope this vlog isn't so long that I have to separate it into two again, but in any case, we're nearing the end of the journey. Not like not that much is different here. Like they changed the entirety of season three part one, but season three part two is pretty much intact because that's where, where most of the action is, which they would never get out because that's all that wit is good for, apparently. And making Levi look hot. I love it when Zeke says, Fine, Levi, we'll call this a draw. I'll see you next time, as if he didn't just get <laughs> benched absolutely benched by a midget like zeke would be dead if levi had unlimited amounts of gas and i stand by that <laughs> literally dead let's call this a draw no this was a pathetic failure and you had to literally flee <laughs> literally flee and wait four years until zeke levi got to bench you again so this wasn't a draw zeke this was just an epic fail it is absolutely hilarious to me. I mean, first of all, it's really sad how Levi looks at Aaron when he realizes that he has to tell him not to revive Armin. <laughs> but this perspective in general, like how he just walks up to Levi and immediately towers over him. He's a 15-year-old kid. Like, sure, he will be tall as shit later, but <laughs> he's just towering over Levi at 15. This poor baby got so little sunlight that he never had puberty. I love him so much but this is a terrible like I understand why they revived Armin but we deserve to see Erwin Smith as the colossal I absolutely understand why it was Armin would have loved to see Erwin though there's a bit that I need to comment on and that's a scene where Aaron is trying to convince Levi by telling him that he has revenge for his mom and everyone has stupid reasons but Armin actually has dreams and he's not doing it for or very simple reason like the rest of them and in that moment you can see that Levi has recognition I think Levi already decided to do Armin 
before because when they said we need to bring back the devil he realized that Erwin deserves rest but I really really enjoy how he heard dreams and you can see the decision in his eyes because that's like a young Erwin someone who hasn't been soiled by the hell yet and someone who deserves to fight and not rest because I will reference the later arc again because I think that moment near the end 136 I think the Levi monologue which we get very rarely when he's like flying and he sees so much of Erwin and Armin and he's like I don't regret I have no regrets I chose the boy with the same fire in his eyes like yours and hurts like a bitch hurts like a bitch I gotta say because <laughs> I love Erwin so much the veterans I already said are everything to me so like I get it but I wish I didn't can we talk about the absolute heartbreak that is this sequence? Because he's thinking of Kenny. He's thinking of Kenny too. This just breaks my heart every time. How he's thinking of Kenny and he's thinking of Erwin and he realized that he can finally release him from his... Like he can die knowing that his dream wasn't something stupid. Because he'll never know. And... Armin has yet to reach his dream. Like yeah, this is just great. This is this is what he is good at. The emotion between soldiers and people who are fighting for their lives. That's what he's good at. Not Nazi propaganda and trying to push good villains when he obviously didn't intend to make them good villains from the get go because otherwise he would have introduced them as way more interesting characters, not ninety chapters in, so heartbreak heartbreak last volume here we are they're gonna reach the sea i think this is a really pretty illustration because the sea and the beach like the colors are just really pretty and this is it this is it they've reached the basement now they're gonna discover a little bit about ymir and then that's it i'm i'm done at least <laughs> so I'm very excited, but at the end of volume 20, 21, there was like <laughs> the little excerpt, like who they would be in school and I would totally be an Aaron. There's, it's no shock that I love him so much. <laughs> I would literally be Aaron, like neither popular, neither a, a nerd, neither a god, like yeah, I I'd be Aaron. <laughs> but let's move on and wrap this up. I'm a little bit sad but I'm happy that I went through the manga again because last time I really wasn't paying any attention and this time I definitely see what the differences are like so far in season three part two literally nothing has been changed I think I think the first half of the season took on the brunt of the <laughs> creative liberties but now they didn't change anything I love how it's just several generations of people passing down their ideals you can definitely see who looks up to whom. Like, Erwin passed it down to Levi. He's quoting Erwin all the time and he adopted his ideals. But Aaron adopted Levi's. He really looked up to um, looks up to him and he uses his advice all the time and he really trusts him. I wish that relationship wasn't, like, forgotten later. Because he's like, I don't know what the right choice is. How can anyone know the future? That's what he's talking about to Armin, which he got from Levi. And I love that so much, actually. As I already said, Aaron and Levi's relationship is literally my favorite. And now everything's going to be screwed, but we will ignore this. And it ends with them hurting the island of Titans, going to the beach, having a fun day, and being able to defend themselves against the world that is my personal head canon and that's what i will be reading now i'll see you in a little bit i am done i completed it i am done with attack on titan but can i just say that like the school thing a it's hilarious that levi is the janitor but yeah it makes sense but like there's a little preview where like <laughs> aaron beats up jean or whatever and we see why Armin and Mikasa would like him in the normal world. Ar Armin liked him because he saved him. 
But Mika says, like, you must be the dark knight called forth by my curse here to fight off that man. Because apparently she's looking for a spell to, like, repel Jean because she's had freaking enough of him. <laughs> yeah, this was absolutely great. We're done with Attack on Titan. This is it. Nothing, I have nothing else to say because, like, nothing's different. This entire box set, nothing was really different. I really had fun. I, like, to wrap everything up, I think it's worth it to read the manga. There, you can use both of my videos as a reference for what's different. I mentioned everything that was different. Like, the biggest difference is the end of season one and the first half of season three. But most of that is just, like, stuff that you could read very, very quickly. Like, you don't miss, miss any action or any scenes. It's just mostly dialogue. Levi, for example, in the first chunk of season three. So I think it's worth it to read the manga. But if you feel like it's too long, then maybe just read the parts where I said that it's different. Or maybe don't. But I definitely think it's worth it. I'm happy that I have it up to here. I will never buy the rest. But I'm very happy that I have it up to here because it's so much easier to read physically than online. And it's actually really pretty to see it and hold it physically like this. So yeah, I really enjoyed myself and <laughs> thank you for coming on this long journey with me. I really had fun. And yeah, that was it. I will see you in the next video. If I think of anything else to say, it will be in the description. And as usual, if you want to talk about Attack on Titan, always hit me up because I love it a lot. And yeah, that's it. I hope I didn't talk for too long. <laughs> so if you're still here, thank you for keeping me company, I guess, while I went through this <laughs> very lengthy and very morbid story. I'll see you in the next video.